Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Worldly distractions can at mildly sway his thoughts of Allah and Judgment Day. Righteous is he, righteous is he, who bows to one he cannot see. Whose deeds do not spring without Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our program, The Excellence of Manners. I'm your host, Muhammad Mamdouh. We have been covering throughout our program the best manners that a, a Muslim is supposed to attain in order to reach a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said uh, the highest level in paradise. And we can attain this through practicing good manners. We have come to the conclusion of uh, these manners. We've gone through about 29 uh, manners and etiquettes. And we've come to the last one, and that is the etiquettes of sleeping. And sleeping is a, a major part of our day and a major part of our life uh, that happens and we go through, that everyone goes through. And there are etiquettes in doing uh, this act, just like there are etiquettes in doing everything. And as we said before, there's a good way to do something and there's a better way to do something. So let us learn the proper way that was taught to us by the Prophet Sallallahu Joining us is Sheikh Saeed Al-Qadi from London, who has been with us throughout the program and he has a background in education and uh, uh, Sharia. Uh, Sheikh Saeed, welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you, Muhammad. May Allah reward you. Uh, we've uh, really enjoyed this program. I've really enjoyed it and I've learned a lot. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, we've come to the end of it and we are going to be covering uh, the etiquettes of sleeping in the end. Um, are there any issues before we go to sleep that we need to understand or notice uh, to begin with? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise is due to Allah alone. We praise Him, we thank Him, we seek His guidance and His forgiveness. We repent to Him. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and our sinful deeds. Whoever Allah guides, none can mislead. And whoever Allah misleads, none can guide. A bearer, a witness that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah. And a bearer, a witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His servant and His last messenger. Uh, before you go to sleep, uh, you need to make sure that there are of many things in your house. And those issues are taught to us by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You need to make sure that there is no fire burning uh, uh, at your house. You shouldn't leave any fire in the house. You should lock all the doors before you sleep. Uh, and when I talk about the fire, I mean any fire, uh, even if it was used for the purpose of decorating or decoration, like candles, like candle, for example, or if you are were cooking something, all right, or if you are if you if the uh, fire is for to produce heat in the house, uh, it's it's not allowed to keep them uh, burning while you sleep. Should extinguish the uh, should uh, extinguish them basically, put them off. Uh, how about before sleeping and preparing for sleep? Is it uh, from the sunnah to have wudu? Yes, definitely. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to one of his companions, if you want to go to your bed and sleep, then make sure that you do do, perform ablution, as you perform ablution for your prayer. And then he said, then sleep on your uh, right side. Uh, it's very important to cover these uh, small details <laughs> because... Some cultures have uh, expanded on these mm -hmm. details to have some bid'ah in it. So mm -hmm. we want to just emphasize Inshallah. the basics. Before we get into mm -hmm. the bed or once we get into the bed, uh, should we do anything to the bed itself, cut the covers? To the bed uh, itself, okay. Yes. You should dust it off. Dust it off, clean it from anything that you might see. Or if you don't see anything, it's still dust it off. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, you don't know what happened to it after you. So make sure you dust it off before you go and sleep. And when you sleep, uh, what side should you lay on? 
you should you should sleep you should lay 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 in, uh, lay down on your right side and you should place your hand beneath your right cheek uh, and the prophet used to do that and used to place his right hand before be, be, beneath his right cheek and he used to say oh allah uh, allahumma qini adabaka yawma tab'athu ibadak oh allah uh, protect me from your punishment in the day in which you will resurrect your servants. So this is the dua that you should as well say when you go to your sleep. Um, and we're saying this, of course, when you mm. sleep, you tend to sleep on different sides and mm. you roll over and things mm. like that. But as we're saying, this is the recommended and this is the, the mm. way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept. Yes, exactly. um, and there's actually many benefits to sleeping on your right side, <laughs> especially after you've eaten, as they say, the... There's less pressure on the stomach, and uh, this is just uh, some s- uh, things that they found out. Um, how about, uh, are there any positions where you're not supposed to sleep on? Like your stomach, your... Yes, uh, like <laughs> that. Khair, you, mentioned it. you know, allowed to sleep on your uh, stomach. And if Sallam, in one occasion, uh, or one of the companions, he was sleeping on his, on his stomach in the masjid, in the mosque. And before the Fajr, a man came to him and he was pushing him by his uh, foot just to uh, turn him. And then he said, I looked at him, I saw him. Uh, he w- it was Nabi uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad. He was, he was, was him who was trying to push me and to change my position. And he told me, don't sleep like this because Allah Ta'ala hates this kind of, uh, of sleeping or this position of sleeping. Don't sleep on your stomach. Um, what about the... Uh, the things that we are supposed to recite, either uh, Quran or the uh, supplications before we fall asleep. What, can you list them for us? And I know there, there are many. There are many, there are many, and you can find them in many books. Uh, can you give us just an example of one Very of the Quran? Cool, and, and okay. Uh, in terms of Quran, if you uh, read, if you recite Ayat al Kursi, the, 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 the verse of um, the chair, if you recite it, then no, no, uh, no shaitan will come near to you on that night. And Allah Ta'ala will assign a guard to guard you until the morning. This verse, Allah, la ilaha illa hayu qayyum, Allah, there is no God but him, uh, to the end of the verse. About only 10 sentences. And this verse has almost 17 names of Allah's blessed names. And those names are either mentioned directly or are implied within the verse. It is very powerful verse. And if you have time, we would have spoke about it. However, you can also read you can you can also read the last two verses of Al-Baqarah, of the chapter of Baqarah, the ba- chapter of the cow. And if you if you recite those two verses, they will be suffice. They will help you. They will protect you. They will suffice you from any harm. Uh, if you read two verses of the Baqarah, the last two verses of the Baqarah, they will be suffice for you. They will protect you. Also you can read uh, uh, you can recite all those verses they are very beneficial and helpful to read before you sleep so we should do our best to memorize at least uh, Ayat Al-Kursi which at is least. very easy at least. And a be- very beautiful mm-hmm. Ayah mm-hmm. Uh, and the last two from Surah Al-Baqarah also mm-hmm. and the Ma'udatan which are at the end of the, the book uh, the three surahs at the end of the book which are also very very small and very short uh, to read and to recite. Mm. Uh, how about the du'a, du'a. the supplications du'a. that we are supposed to say? Inshallah, I will mention two du'as only. The first one, if you say it and you die on that night, you will enter Jannah. What a great du'a! If you say that du'a sincerely from your heart and you die on that night, you will enter Jannah. And this du'a we call it the, the chief of istighfar. This du'a of seeking forgiveness, you should say on this du'a, uh, Allahumma. أنت ربي أو oh الله you are my Lord خلقتني وأنا عبدك you have created me and I'm your slave وأنا على عهدك ووعدك أنا am upon my covenant I'm a promise to you ما استطعت as much as I can أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت I seek refuge in you from the evil of my, of my actions أبوء لك بنعمتك علي I acknowledge your favors upon me and I acknowledge my sins. Oh Allah, forgive it. Forgive, forgive my sins. Oh Allah, forgive me. Uh, if you say this dua, none can forgive your heart, but you. Sorry? None, can, none forgives but you. No, no, there's none who can forgive but you. May Allah bless you. Allah khair. 
فإنه لا يكفر ذنوب إلا أنت none can forgive but you if you say this dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you enter Jannah if you said it sincerely from your heart if you die on that night you will enter Jannah and if you say if you say it in the daytime and you die in that day you will enter Jannah بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى I want to mention that this uh, dua is very important to learn, exactly. not only to, mm. to read at night, mm. but rather uh, any time that you are uh, saying astaghfirullah and repenting and you do something wrong and you want to return. That, as you said, this is the chief oh, of, of, uh, seeking forgiveness. of seeking forgiveness. It's, uh, it's the beautiful dua mm. that we should all memorize. Uh, and sometimes, of course, when we, we fall asleep, mm. uh, inshallah, we have good dreams. Inshallah. But if we have nightmares and we wake up, what should we do? Oh, we should actually, um, uh, first of all, if you had any nightmare, we should, uh, we have, we have three points that we should adhere to. If you, have, if you had any bad dream, don't tell anyone about it. And once you wake up, once you wake up, speak to your left three times and say, A'udhu Rashid Tarajim, three times and ask Allah Ta'ala to seek refuge in Allah Ta'ala from its evil. And it will not harm you. It will not harm you. So say Allah Ta'ala give three times and then spit to your lips three times and then uh, change your position as well. If you are sleeping on your on, on, on that, 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 that corner, go to the other corner uh, and then don't tell anyone about it and it won't harm you at all. Uh, a good point that you mentioned mm. is don't speak about your mm. nightmares. Yeah. Because at a lot all. of people wake up and they say, oh, I had this terrible nightmare mm. yesterday and they start saying these uh, things. And uh, maybe you can tell us why we shouldn't talk about our nightmares when inshallah. we come back, inshallah. Uh, please stay with us. This is the excellence of manners. We'll be back after these moments, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back to our program, The Excellence of Manners. And I'd like to welcome back Shaykh Saeed, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's topic uh, that we're discussing is uh, the etiquettes of sleeping. Uh, and before the break, we're talking about... Uh, the, the etiquettes we do before getting into bed, uh, what we should do when we lie in bed, the, the idea that we're supposed to say and the supplications we're supposed to say uh, before falling asleep. Uh, and we mentioned that when you have a bad dream and a nightmare, you're supposed to do certain etiquettes uh, and not to talk about the bad dream. Exactly. Why are we not supposed to talk about the bad dream? Because they might interpret it. people they might interpret it in a negative way and it might fall. On that, it might happen if uh, if you tell people about it, and if they interpret it into in the wrong way, it might happen uh, as they uh, explained it. You might kind of lead things to happen exactly. in a certain direction exactly. in, in a bad manner. Exactly. It might actually happen. Uh, we should also mention that sleeping itself, and the reason we're putting uh, this as the last episode of our mm -hmm. program, is because sleeping is actually a form of death as uh, Allah it subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions mm. uh, to us. And before we sleep, mm. we should realize that you might not wake up. Exactly. And exactly. really kind of uh, mm. say the adaya with uh, ikhlas and you know sincerity yes. and remember that Perfect. really you might not Perfect. wake up from the sleep. What are some other uh, supplications that we can say uh, before we sleep. May Allah bless you. It's a form of, of, uh, of dying. Allah Ta'ala, when He spoke about uh, sleep, and He said, uh, Allah Ta'ala is the one who, who, who calls you to die at night. So Allah Ta'ala called it as death. So therefore, when you, whenever you go to sleep, uh, think that this sleep is your last day, and your last night, and your last, and your last time in this life. 
So we have a supplication that you could say as well, which will, uh, uh, if, you, if you die on that night after saying it, you will die on the pure uh, uh, nature of Islam, the pure nature of Islam or the pure fitrah of Islam. This dua you should say, once you sleep on your right uh, side and you place your right hand under your right cheek, you should say, Allahumma aslamtu nafsi ilayk. Oh Allah, I submit my soul to you. وَوَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِ إِلَيْكَ And I directed my face towards you, towards the Qibla. وَأَلْجَأْتُ ظَهْرِي إِلَيْكَ And I put my trust upon you. وَفَوَّضْتُ أَمْرِي إِلَيْكَ And I leave all of my affairs to you. رَغْبَةً وَرَهْبَةً إِلَيْكَ With fear and hope from you. لَا مَلْجَ وَلَا مَنْجَ مِنْكَ إِلَّا إِلَيْكَ There is no, no one who can support, help, protect but you. Subhanallah. You put everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you say, آمنت بكتابك الذي أنزلت I believe in your book that you have revealed ونبيك الذي أرسلت and your prophet that you have sent. And make sure that you say, the, you, say, you, say, you say the dua correctly because one of the companions said at the end ورسولك الذي أرسلت وصلنا said to him, no, ونبيك الذي أرسلت and your prophet that you have sent not your messenger that you have sent. Make sure you make it accurate and memorize it very well. If you say this dua and you die on that night, you will die on, on, upon the pure nature of Islam. Inshallah ta'ala. And any time we, we mm. learn a verse that we're supposed to repeat constantly, mm. uh, because we repeat it so much, it sometimes causes us not to think of the verse. Exactly. It becomes like a mechanical <laughs> action for us. And it's very important to contemplate of over the verse or a dua or dua, supplication, dua, be sincere right. Right. in, in your, your dua. Heart, yeah. uh, and it's a good thing we're actually mm -hmm. concluding our program mm -hmm. with this because if we learn all these manners that we're mm -hmm. supposed to do during the day, this is the last thing you're supposed to do at night. Exactly. And that <laughs> it's a form of, so it's a form of a, a natural conclusion to your day. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. it should be, as you said in the dua, you know, you're submitting completely to Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta 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 and that is the and end of your day. for the departure of this life because then you might die. Subhanallah. It puts really everything in perspective for you when That's you right. exactly. before you go to sleep mm. that, that, that that this could be it, and then when you start a, another day, it's a whole other test, and every day is a different <laughs> day, and you have to repeat the whole Allah thing, Allah and every time you wake up is a different chance for you. It's another chance for, another you, chance for you to do better, to is, uh, apply all the manners mm. that <laughs> you know, that of teach. All these it just Inshallah. goes into a circle. And Allah has given us so many chances to uh, yes. pass this yeah. test. Um, the other question and the last question I have for you is when we have a good dream uh, what should we do when we have a good dream uh, if you have a good dream first of all you need to, you need to know that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the good dreams are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have in the hadith that if you see a good dream then it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so be happy with it if I say, all be happy with it. And then tell people about it. Tell, tell people about it. But who should you tell? And who should you speak about uh, your dream? First, we have as well another hadith. لا تقص رؤياك إلا على عالم أو ناصح. And the hadith is sound as Albani said. Don't tell, you, don't tell about your good dream to anyone. Don't speak to, about it to anyone except the person who has knowledge or the person who is optimistic because sometimes they might uh, interpret it in a different way or in a wrong method in a wrong way or in a uh, weak manner and it might happen uh, as they as they explained it so therefore either you go to someone who got knowledge or someone who's who is optimistic so he will give you uh, he will he will translate in the best manner inshallah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you should be as well happy with it but don't say it to anyone don't tell, don't tell anyone about it uh, unless if you have it translated as well uh, that comes to uh, the end of this topic mm -hmm. and uh, I just wanted to uh, review kind of all the things that we've learned and kind of Allah wrap Allah. up uh, <laughs> we began uh, by talking about matters that are basics in Islam and being kind and uh, having family ties and being patient and being humble 
and that uh, a huge matter mm. in, in your manners is the tongue. Exactly. And controlling your tongue is a major part of <laughs> having is, good manners. It is, it is. Uh, you know, speaking the truth, mm. uh, not backbiting, uh, saying the good words. These are all from uh, the best of manners, and we've learned mm. many etiquettes. Uh, including how to uh, go to the mosque and uh, visiting people and uh, even loving uh, mm. one another. Uh, and exactly. it's been a beautiful, beautiful I time. And what I really loved about it mm. is that we were always connecting, uh, defining the meaning and connecting uh, this manner with matters of the heart and how, how practical it is to achieve this and what we can do to actually achieve this. It's also what was beautiful about it uh, is that you were always referring to the Quran and Sunnah and, and these. And Sounds subhanAllah, uh, all we have to do is read the Prophet's uh, seerah uh, in order exactly. to see these uh, manners actually implemented. They're not just manners that he said you need to have this, 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 this. He actually, uh, uh, he had these manners and he was always in a state of you know smiling and kindness exactly. and clemency and uh, may exactly. Allah allow us a, to achieve all of these uh, manners uh, for this occasion I've uh, <laughs> written a poem uh, <laughs> that uh, actually links to a previous um, in the beginning you had linked good manners to a uh, form of Iman, a tree a, as Iman well. is a tree. Mm. So I wrote a poem regarding this uh, issue that I'd like to share with you oh, and exactly. our yeah, viewers. Inshallah. It says, You can find good manners if you see the character of the humble apple tree. Its foundation is strong and blessings are tasteful. So are the characteristics of the truly faithful. It offers its shade protection from the sun never discriminating against anyone. If you take from its fruit, it will continue to give as long as its Lord allows it to live, asking nothing in return and relying on its Lord like the believer seeking true reward. God sent us a guide in order to teach, to perfect our manners, not only to preach. So by forgiving and thinking before you talk, be kind to your family and be humble in your walk. Be honest and trustworthy, and remember to smile, for the tribulations of this life are only for a short while. And if you do, the reward is great. So compete in doing good before it's too late. And my last reminder for you and me, let's take a lesson from the apple tree. MashaAllah, MashaAllah Akbar, MashaAllah. What a beautiful poem, MashaAllah. Jazakumullah khair. It's been a wonderful, wonderful program uh, to have hosted with uh, my dear guest, Sheikh Saeed. Uh, I would like you uh, to give us one final thought or some final advice. We have a few moments left, uh, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me uh, in this program. Um, uh, I would like to conclude, inshallah ta'ala, with saying uh, that if you want, if you want, for the viewer and for all of us, inshallah ta'ala, if you want to enter Jannah with the greatest of ease, with the greatest of ease, then acquire good manners. Because one of the most actions that will lead to Jannah is having good manners. If you want to enter Jannah and acquire the highest ranks of Jannah, then acquire good manners. We have in the hadith, I, I guarantee a dwelling in the, in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner, who perfects his manners and his conduct. If you want to uh, have your Iman perfected, then acquire good manners. Because you will never be able to, uh, to uh, perfect your Iman unless you acquire good manners. If you want to come in the Day of Judgment and find uh, the best deed or the most heaviest deed in your scale of good deeds, then acquire good manners because they are the heaviest deeds in the scale of good deeds. If you want in the Day of Judgment, if you want as well uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write for you the rewards of the person who prays continuously in the, uh, during the nights and the one who uh, fasts during the days continuously, then acquire good deeds and Allah Ta'ala out of his pleasure 
will write for you this because we have that in the sound hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write for the person who acquires good deeds, the rank of the person who prays in the night and who the one who uh, fasts in the days continuously. Allah ta'ala will give you this reward, a huge reward. If you want to acquire Allah's love, Allah's love, you want Allah ta'ala to love you and to be close to you, then acquire good manners. If you want to acquire the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then acquire good manners. He will love you and in fact he will sit next to him, near him in the day of resurrection. And I will end up with this and I will thank you for having me. May Allah bless you, Sad Muhammad. And may Allah bless the channel. Jazakumullah khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ibn Muhammad. And thank you for the viewers. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Saeed. Uh, may Allah bless you for everything that you've shared with us. And Jazakumullah khair and may Allah bless you uh, to the viewers. And I hope you found this program to be educational. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my dear guest once again, Sheikh Saeed. And I'd like to thank uh, Huda for allowing us to have this program. Uh, may Allah bless us and allow us to have these manners and join us with uh, our Prophet وسلم, in paradise. Uh, join us again on our other programs, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Worldly distractions cannot mildly sway his thoughts of Allah and judgment day. Righteous is he, righteous is he, who bows to one he cannot see. Whose deeds do not spring without Bismillah Fulfilling his tasks with perfect taqwa